My name is Lily Pierce. I'm 27 years old. I'm a lay servant in the United Methodist Church, and I have a disability called Friedrich's Ataxia, which does affect my speech, as you've likely already noticed. Today's topic is why I'm feeling a bit jaded about Christmas lately, or at least Christmas as it's celebrated here in America. Can't speak to everybody else's experience. Sometimes in real life, and also in social media posts, I'll see, hear, read another Christian who is railing about how we need to keep the Christ in Christmas and how society is trying to oppress Christians and trying to change the holiday and we need to remember the reason for the season. Being a Christian myself, I do support the idea of remembering the reason for the season, although I think that some Christians take it too far when they imply that we are being actively oppressed. The reason I think that it's ridiculous to say we're oppressed, and also the reason that I've become a bit jaded about Christmas in America, is that if you look at the Old Testament prophets, who were prophesying around the time of the Babylonian exile, either before, during, or after the return to Jerusalem, you will see that really we in America embody the oppressors more than the oppressed. I'd like to share just three of many examples with you, and I hope that that magic number of three will convince you that this is a thing that is prevalent in Scripture. The first passage comes from Jeremiah 5:28 through 29 and it reads Oh, excuse me, 27 through 29. It reads, Like a cage full of birds, their houses are full of treachery. Therefore they have become great and rich. They have grown fat and sleek. They know no limits in deeds of wickedness. They do not judge with justice the cause of the orphan to make it prosper, and they do not defend the rights of the needy. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? If you look at the damage that America, or maybe just first world countries in general, what we have done to the earth and other people, these factories that we have in the, the foreign countries like Bangladesh and Vietnam and China that underpay their workers and treat them horribly and have them living in bad conditions and are putting toxic waste in our environment and pretty much every bad thing you can think of. We have supported that because of our greed. And because of our greed, we have become, as this verse says, fat and sleek, great and rich. Speaking of exploitation of the earth and the poor people, here is a passage from Micah. Micah 3, 1 through 3. It reads, And I said, Listen, you heads of Jacob and rulers of the house of Israel, should you not know justice, you who hate the good and love the evil, who tear the skin off my people and the flesh off their bones, who eat the flesh of my people, flay their skin off them, break their bones in pieces and chop them up like meat in a kettle, like flesh in a cauldron. I say this relates to exploitation because the verse speaks of consuming people, but they don't mean it literally, it's figurative. And we figuratively consume the earth and people just so we can have all of these cheap goods that ultimately add clutter to our homes and our lives. Here's just one more, Amos 2, 6 through 7a. Thus says the Lord, For three transgressions of Israel and for four I will not revoke the punishment, because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and push the afflicted out of the way. Considering that America 
comprises 5% of the world population and uses 25% of the world's energy and resources, I would say that figuratively we do trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and sell the needy for a pair of sandals. I've become jaded about Christmas in America because ultimately it's become a season of overindulgence. We make so much food that we consume and we also throw away. We spend so much money buying gifts for people and all those gifts require resources from the earth and from people to make and Meanwhile, we see in the research that Americans spend billions of dollars a year on unwanted gifts. So realistically, we are just generating more trash to end up in a junkyard in the future. And we also have the material waste of the boxes and the bags and the bows and the tissue paper and the ribbons and the name tags and the tape and... The cheap little decorations that we buy at Dollar Tree or wherever and we throw them away year after year and just get more the next year. Some would certainly call me a Scrooge for saying all these things because here I am focusing on the negative and in, in some people's opinion probably overemphasizing that negative instead of being in the Christmas spirit and thinking about the joy and the happiness of buying gifts and giving gifts. First of all, I want to say I'm certainly not perfect and I fall into the trap of buying too much stuff at Christmas. But also, I've realized that gift giving can actually be a great thing if we take the time to get meaningful, thoughtful gifts and take the time to support sustainable companies, local crafters, small businesses. But unfortunately, most people in America, don't know about other countries, do not have that discretion and self-control to say, I'll just buy a couple higher quality, more expensive, really meaningful gifts. It's easier to just drive to the big box store and not think about the effects that our decisions have and instead just buy as much as we can for as little as we can. We've always heard the phrase, it's the thought that counts, but how much thought are we really putting into things at this point? It's because it seems like we've gotten to this point where we're just going through the motions where gift giving and gift buying are sort of compulsive, and where year after year we're making more food, buying more things, decorating more, we're always just trying to outpace ourselves and somehow, I don't know if you guys relate to this, but somehow feeling like we didn't do enough anyway. I knew that I'd need to not give in to the feeling of cynicism because Jesus embodies hope. I need to be a peacemaker. I need to be a gentle person. I need to embody the fruits of the Spirit. So for me this year, putting the Christ back in Christmas, remembering the reason for the season, it needs to be about putting thought back into things, thinking about my decisions and the consequences of them, thinking about how I can help other people in need, thinking about all the things that I have that other people don't have. Thinking about how I can be the hands and the feet and the face of Jesus today and every day. And that seems appropriate because the season of Advent is supposed to be a season of reflection about Jesus' second coming. So I need to do some reflecting this year. As a reminder of the standard, what does it mean to be like Jesus? Allow me to read for you a passage from Matthew, Matthew twenty-five, thirty-one through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. 
All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. And these will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Perhaps we Christians should spend this year measuring ourselves against this standard. In my opinion, putting the Christ back in Christmas requires being less materialistic and being less focused on ourselves and the hustle and bustle of the holidays, and instead be thinking about loving God and loving our neighbor. And remember, biblical love is an action verb. Hey guys, it's me from a couple hours in the future, and I realized that I did not mention appreciating time with our loved ones at all in this video, so please do that as well. God bless you all and have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas!